Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World. Today I would like to give 5 basic tips for new players on Endless Legend. Endless Legend is a really nice 4x game. Um, it plays in, a, uh, in the Endless universe. If you played Endless Space uh, you know uh, a bit about that. It basically plays on one planet uh, in that universe. Um, and it really is a very very nice 4x game, uh, very atmospheric, there's actually uh, cool stories in it, the races are really different and each race follows a different storyline and uh, I think they're really interesting. Um, however, like any 4x games, they can be fairly hard to get into, uh, and Endless Legends is actually fairly easy to get into, but I thought I would still make 5 tips for beginners that really helped me out when I started playing, so I hope you enjoy them. Tip number one is about settling. Uh, so in this game it's actually quite interesting. You ha it's divided into regions. Now at the beginning of the game I can't see it yet, uh, but there's basically provinces and each province can only contain one city. So where you build your city is extremely important in the game. Um, it's generally accepted that it's the best to um, settle in turn one. Except if there's like a really a great place somewhere where you can uh, settle on turn two. Um, but what you should know is that there are that you start with uh, three units, a settler and two uh, normal units, and those units, if you click on one and then right click somewhere else, they will walk there. So there's no hurry in immediately settling, you can first explore a bit. So if you click on this button you see the resources, and then I will send the other one here, and you can see that there is actually a very nice tile here, which is a geothermal pit that gives me a lot of research and production. Um, but it's a bit far away. I only have six movement. These things cost two movement, so I could never get there on turn one. Um, other things are nice to have is kind of here this construction. Uh, money is also kind of nice. And you should take into account that uh, you can expand your city later on. So around your city you should also have fairly good tiles. Rivers are really nice because there's good uh, improvements of getting money from rivers, for example. Um, so I think this here would not be a bad spot. So you just click on colonization, this one, and as you can see the uh, six tiles around it are also colonized, and I'll build a city there. So um, yeah, so this is my only city I can have within this entire region. Uh, of course I played a roving clan so I can move my city, but normally you can't. So really um, take care of where you put your city. The second tip is regarding research nominal fees. So in every 4x game I've played basically research becomes more expensive as you go along, right? Like in the higher tier research will cost you more research than the lower tier ones. However in this game there is also a research nominal fee which makes you uh, pick and select your uh, research more carefully. Because now this one uh, research here um, I'm now doing, it cost me 42. However, once I finish this, uh, you will see what happens. The rest will become more expensive. I will show you uh, once this is finished. So as you can see, I now finished my seed storage, uh, which cost 42, but now every uh, other one cost 61. So the research went up by quite a lot. And after I research this one, then the rest will go up again. So be very careful on what you research first, because stuff is going to get more expensive over time. Tip number three is about settlers. So when you build a settler in order to um, colonize another region, um, they don't just cost a certain amount of production. Uh, basically, they also take away all your food resources. So if I click on the settler here, add it to my queue, you see that my food is zero. That means that even if I move my guys somewhere else, my food will still be zero. So now, for example, it cost me five turns, but if I would have left these two there, it would have cost me nine turns, but I wouldn't get anything extra out of it. So be careful when you build your settler to just remove all your uh, people from the food uh, tab, because it's just wasted. Tip number four is about approval and disapproval. So your people generally don't like you expanding too fast. For example, here I have two uh, cities, and when I click on the uh, content, they say um, they don't like uh, my expansion. There's minus 7.5 expansion disapproval, and that's because I built a second city. However, they're also unhappy because I have so called city tiles. So, in this game, you can build borough streets, as you can see here. Uh, it's not very clear. One, two, three, I've, I've already built. And what those borough streets do is they give me a lot of extra stuff basically. They give me extra research and extra production and stuff on top of the tile uh, uh, what it already has. Plus it expands uh, my city uh, to 
uh, harvest more tiles. For example, normally the city starts like this, but because I've got burrow streets here, I get all of these tiles extra as well. Um, so they give me a lot of stuff, so they're good to build. However, they also give me a minus 10 per tile that I built um, from expansion. As you can see here, it also gives me a plus 5 from game difficulty, because at the moment I'm playing on newbie, just to be able to show you this easily without getting uh, distracted by other um, factions all the time. Um, so basically that means now I have three of these burrow streets. Um, so first of all they're unhappy I have expansion disapproval and second of all I get a minus 15 in total. Normally you would get minus uh, 30 but now I get minus 10 plus 5 for the game difficulty so that's a minus 5 per tile. So what can you do about it? Well uh, you will basically want to level your tiles. As you can see here it gives me a... Um, no wait... there. Uh, the burrow streets give you a plus 15 per level on city tiles. So once these burrow streets level, they instead of a minus 10, they give you a plus 5. So they, uh, minus 10 plus 15 is plus 5. So we need to level them. And to do that, we need to surround them by other burrow streets. As it says, it will upgrade to level 2 when surrounded by 4 level 1 districts. So now I'm here in my city center and my burrow streets will be finished in 6 turns. Uh, then it will be surrounded by four uh, burrow streets and you will see what will happen. There. As you can see now, my people are still unhappy, but they have way less problems. Um, and that's because here, this city got plus 15 from being a city center. And it became a city center because it was surrounded by borough streets. Four borough streets made it level two, basically. Um, so now instead of a uh, minus 15, I only still have a minus five. I can start making this better by surrounding, uh, putting a borough street here, for example, which will mean uh, that this one will start being surrounded by level one borough streets and then they will level up as well. So basically by putting these borough streets close together, you will be able to um, circumvent all this happiness problem. So it's not generally a good idea to kind of beeline somewhere. For example, if I wanted this geothermal pit, I could build burrow streets all the way there, but then they would all stay level one and they would give me a huge happiness decrease. And as you can see, they're unhappy and my production suffers because of it, because uh, I get minus 9.2 um, production from unhappy. Now it doesn't matter so much because I get a plus 9.8 from game difficulty, but normally when you don't play on easy, uh, these minuses really start adding up. So you really have to be careful with your uh, expansion and how you do it. Just as a little extra, as you can see here, I've got a city, one, two, three, four borough streets, and another one here. Um, the city also kind of counts as a city tile, of course, so these ones are now both surrounded by four tiles so that's one two three four for that one and one two three four for that one so now you can see that this one is level two and that means it gets a plus five from expansion it was minus 10 before then it got a plus 15 because now it's level two and then um, that adds up to a plus five so basically now my people are suddenly happy so I get, uh, of course, I also have some improvements now, for example, the, the sewer system. Uh, but I don't really have this, this minus points from city tiles anymore. I actually have a plus 20 now, which is partly because I, I play on easy. Um, but yeah, so that's how you um, use the system of leveling your city tiles in order to prevent unhappiness. Tip number five is about luxury resources. I think they're often uh, quite overlooked and they're fairly easy to forget about. Uh, what are lux luxury resources? Well, as you can see here, for example, there is wine. And um, wine, uh, I put a wine extractor on it. Um, and it basically gives me the luxury resource wine. If I go here to my empire screen, you can see here wine. And um, it says its booster costs is 15, so if I click on this I use 15 wine, but then for 10 rounds I get 30 uh, plus 30 approval on my cities. So let's say all my cities are unhappy, then all my production goes down and all that kind of stuff, then it's really good to click on this and then I get, uh, for 10 turns, I get plus 30 on each city, which means I get a huge boost in my production uh, in the game. So um, be sure to, well, you have to research um, things for it. For example, um, here, 
Um, it gives me a dye extractor, emerald extractor, gold extractor, spice extractor, and wine extractor. So if you have any of those luxury resources on your uh, in your region, be sure to use them and be sure to look at what they do and if they're useful. You can also always trade them away at the marketplace um, and you can also buy them there. For example, here I have um, 14 blood crystals, but a booster costs me 15 blood crystals. It gives me extra attack on units, so if I'm about to go to war it would be very very useful and it gives me some approval. So I could go to my marketplace, go to luxuries, buy one blood crystal for 26 and then I'd have the blood crystal so when I would attack I would just click on this and all my units would be 25% stronger for uh, 10 turns so be sure to look at these re uh, luxury resources and to use them because they can really really uh, boost your efficiency in the game so these were the five basic tips for new players. I hope you found them useful. Uh, these are basically the things that uh, I found really useful uh, to know when I started uh, playing off, uh, playing the game. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoy the game. It really is a fantastic 4X game. Uh, so I hope you find it useful and see you next time.